Hey, this is Kyle. Uh, let's write some code. Today I thought we'd do something fun. Um, let's do 2D animations uh, using Canvas and some JavaScript. Um, I have a basic setup here. I'll put a link in the description to get the similar setup um, going for you on your computer. Um, but let's get to it. Um, the first thing we're going to do is create a Canvas element. Uh, so we're going to do that by creating a variable here. And we're going to say document create element canvas. Once we have our element, we need to put it into our document. So we're going to say document body and reference the body tag, append child. And this will append this canvas element to our page. And so we can see here on our page, yep, we have a canvas element. Now it's only 300 by 150 pixels wide, which is pretty small. So let's just make it as big as the entire window. And so with that, we can say canvas width equals window screen width. That will set it to the same size as the screen window width. And we'll do the same thing for the height. So now when we save, we have a canvas that fills most of the window. So now that we have the element on our page, now we need to get the context. And the context is what we use to draw to the canvas element. So with that, we're going to say canvas, and we're going to call a method called getContext. And it only takes one parameter, and that's called 2D. Um, you just have to supply this, and no, there isn't a 3D. Um, there is a WebGL, though, um, for other things. Um, but for this purposes, we're only going to be doing uh, 2D context. So just put it in there. Um, so now with our context, we can create a rectangle by saying context fill rect. And this is going to take four parameters. Uh, the first two are the X and Y coordinates. So we're just going to put it up in the top uh, left corner here. And then let's just make it 100 pixels wide by 100 pixels tall. So now when we save it, we have a 100 by 100 black pixel, uh, black square. So what if we want to just move it over to the side a little bit? We can do that by changing the X, y, X value. We can change the Y value, move it down a little bit. Uh, we can make it a little little thinner, um, you know, anything we want. Let's just for now keep it at our 100 by 100. So now if you want to, if you don't like a black square, maybe you, you would like a red square. Um, before your call to fill rec, you can change a property called uh, fill style. And so you say context, fill style, and we're going to set this to a, a color. Let's just set it to red. Uh, this will also take uh, hexadecimal values, um, pretty much anything that CSS is going to take. Um, so let's just keep it as our red square here. Um, yeah, so basically any call before um, and after um, is going to um, use the style you have defined before. So if you're going to create a bunch of squares, maybe you know one, 200 pixels off to the side here, um, that one also will be red. And so if you want one red one and maybe one green one, feeling uh, festive, uh, you're going to need to change the fill style before you draw that rectangle. Now, two little squares might be pretty boring, so let's make them more exciting by uh, moving them. Um, so we need to create a animation frame. And basically, this is just a loop that uh, is called over and over and over as right before the browser repaints um, and it allows us to animate um, uh, as we draw. Uh, so do, to do that we say window dot request animation frame and we're going to supply it a function here that we're going to give it a name and we're just going to call it loop. And this is important because we want to call this loop over and over and over um, with each animation request or the uh, request animation frame um, and um, and move our um, squares here. So what we're going to do is let's just create a variable and we'll call this x and this will be the x position. We're going to start at zero here and every frame we're going to say okay x move move one pixel. And instead of drawing our square up here, our red square, let's move it on down here. Um, 
And let's, instead of setting the integer there, let's just use our variable here. And so now, every time this is called, it will use the x value, which gets incremented every time it's called. And so now, after we're done drawing, we call window request animation frame again, and we give it our loop. So this is the function we gave here. And so basically what it's gonna do, it's gonna run, it's gonna do all of our drawing and says, okay, once we're done drawing, let's call it again and loop it again and loop it again and again and again and again and again. And so what this is gonna do, it's going to continually increment X here and draw our red rectangle. And so when I hit save here, oh, oh no. But what's happening now is it's drawing it, but it's not clearing the previous frame. So what we're doing is we're just drawing a bunch of rect rectangles and we're getting the really long one. So there's a method to do this instead. Uh, so in the beginning of our frame, we want to just maybe just clear the entire frame and just start fresh. So let's do that with context, clear rect. And so this takes the same parameters as fill rect. And so we're gonna give it X and Y of zero, zero to start up at the top left corner. And then we're just going to fill the entire screen. So we're going to say canvas width, canvas height. And now when we save, it's going to first clear the entire screen and then draw our red rectangle. And each frame, it's going to move it over one pixel. And just to get our green square back here, let's add that back in. And maybe we can add another variable here. We can say y. Pair y, and we can say y is gonna, it's gonna increment half the speed. There we go. Now we have two moving squares with different colors on the screen, 2D animations. Now that we have these variables available to us, um, we can begin to add user interaction. Um, so doing that, we can say, okay, document, uh, add event listener, and we're gonna to listen to the mouse down event. That's gonna give us a callback with a parameter, which is an event. I'm just gonna call it E, stands for event. Well, let's just call it event. I like E, but you know, that may not make sense to most people. Um, so let's just do event. And so we're gonna, event has a bunch of things about the event that happened. And so event button, is which button on the mouse was clicked. And so we're gonna say if it was the zero one, which is the left mouse button, uh, we're gonna change the X value. We're gonna increment it by 10. And so instead of up here, we are gonna only have X change when our mouse button is down. So now as I'm clicking, it moves the button. And then we can add another for the green if the right mouse button is clicked, let's change the Y value. So now as I right click, the green square moves. Left click, red square moves, living in the future. So if you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you have, uh, please share it. Uh, maybe somebody else will enjoy it as well. Um, and if you want to see more, please subscribe and like, and um, I will catch you next time. Thanks.